Hello and welcome back to Global. I'm John Sopel. It is said of the 1960s that if you can remember them, you probably weren't there. That can't be said of my next guest, Terry O'Neill, because he has chronicled the 1960s, photographing and befriending rock stars, movie legends from the Rolling Stones to Bridget Bardot. He even ended up dating sometimes marrying some of them. He's said to have inspired a revolution in intimate portrait photography and an exhibition of his vintage images are going to be on display this month at the Ransom Art Gallery in London and I'm delighted to say that Terry O'Neill is with us now. Welcome Hi. to you. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. Um, you really did seem to do something that, you know, most people when they have a photograph taken you have a sense mm. that they know that there is a photographer with a right. camera lens standing in front of them. And with your photographs, you just get a sense that they are there themselves, unaware. Well, I, I don't know how it happened. It just happened to me. I started out, you know, the very first job I ever had in a newspaper, I got sent to photograph a group, and they turned out to be the Beatles recording Please Please Me. And I started at the top, and I never looked back. I mean, everyone I photographed, you know, Michael Caine, Terry Stamp, Liz Taylor... Ava Gardner, well, Ava Gardner. We've got a picture of Ava Gardner right behind you there. Yes, I know. When I met her, I said, oh, I've got a chance to photograph your ex-husband. She said, oh, I'll write you a letter. And she wrote me a letter. I walked on the set, gave it to me, said, right, you're with me. And I was off and on for the next 30 years. I mean, I've had every bit of luck going, believe me. And I've had a wonderful life and I've photographed some wonderful people. And hopefully, I mean, there's nobody I really want to photograph anymore. Is that right? You've done no, they, all these are so great, the people I've done. They just don't make people like that anymore. I looked on your website just before I came down to the studio, and I read about, you know, those fantastic portraits of people that you photographed and what you think about them. You, you seem to love humanity. Oh, I do, yes. I mean, you didn't have a bad word to say about anyone. I just wonder whether you can take a, a beautiful, great, intimate portrait of someone that you can't stand. <laughs> well, I have done. I mean, this, but I always see the good in everybody. There is good in everybody, you know, even people, you know, with terrible reputation. There's always some good in there, and they've always become like that through some, you know, in inadequacy of someone around them. You just have to get through all that and get to them. Right, because my production team don't trust me to ask intelligent <laughs> questions, who can blame them? Right. Uh, we've got loads of questions that have come in on Facebook for right. you. Uh, Philip from Jakarta, Indonesia. How do you get your subjects to forget they are being photographed? Which is kind of sort of, sort of where I start. Well, um, y you know, you get to know them. And, I mean, Sinatra taught me the ultimate lesson in photography. I walked on the set, gave him this letter, and he looked at me. He said, right, you're with me. And for I was with him three weeks, and I could go anywhere with him. And I didn't have to enter into his life. I could just, just go anywhere. And it's creating that respect from the person that will enable you to act okay. like you're not there. Right, Tracy Cow from Sydney, Australia says, who was your most interesting or beautiful subject? Okay, most beautiful, because... Well, I thought Ava Gardner was, in her heyday, was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. But there are some beautiful, I mean, Audrey Hepburn was incredible. Bridget Bardot was incredible. I mean, they were all great. And, uh, and the man that st always stays in my mind most, who, who uh, I was his uh, 90th birthday present, I was his photographer for the week when he had his 90th birthday here, was Nelson Mandela, who t I was really, I was in tears when he left. He was such a great man. And he met the whole, you know, Bill Clinton came over, Oprah Winfrey, the whole world came over to see him. And he was a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh I think the next one from Babs Ailea, which is in London, was who was your favourite to photograph and who would you still like to photograph? Well, you've answered that who would you still like to photograph? Nobody. Right, no, but, well, I did go and do Palais a couple of months ago for his management for the, because yeah. he's going to be the face of the World Cup next year. But there's not, there's not many people... I, I must say I'm quite happy resting on my laurels now. Um, and you photographed Munro? No, I didn't. Oh, and that, that was because when I was very young, I was 24, and I went to Hollywood, and I met this fantastic PR, who it turned out to be her PR, a girl called Pat Newcomb. And I sort of fell in love with her, unbeknownst to her. And, of course, my whole aim was to get to start a relationship with her. So I didn't even bother with Marilyn Monroe. And she said, I'm not going to let you photograph her anyway. She takes all the photographers to bed. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's a bit of autobiography that is yes. missing from a rich and extraordinary life. And we can just see these fabulous pictures uh, behind us. I think we've got some other pictures as well which we can show, which just show. Uh, and I think we're going to go out now with some of the photographs of Terry O'Neill, whose uh, latest exhibition is just about to open at the Mark Ransom Gallery in London. Uh, Terry O'Neill, fantastic to have you with us in the Thank studio. You. Let's just have a look at some of those photos.